Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, Hollywood has a talent for taking symbols of our cherished childhood and smashing them into indescribable amounts of fecal matter, and nowhere is that more prominent than in the horrors of the Super Mario Brothers movie. The game, about two Italian plumbers who rescue a princess from a dragon, was such a huge hit that they put it on everything. Candy, magazines, comic books, the works. So it only figured to put together a Super Mario Bros. movie as quickly as possible. And when we saw the trailer for this movie, we realized it wasn't just Super Mario Bros. It was Super Mario Bros. on steroids! I'm serious, dude. This movie was packing with flamethrowers, rocket boots, giant monsters, and a badass-looking city. So naturally, we got hyped. It was opening day, there were lines around the block, and we were ready to see the badass action film of the year. We sat down in our seats, and the film began. Alright, the traditional Mario music! This is gonna be just like the game! A long, long time ago, the Earth was ruled by dinosaurs. They were big, so not a lot of people went around hassling them. You know, it just don't get no better than this. Then, a giant meteorite struck the Earth. Goodbye, dinosaurs! What if the dinosaurs weren't all destroyed? What if the impact of that meteorite created a parallel dimension where the dinosaurs continue to thrive and evolve into intelligent, vicious, aggressive beings? And hey, what if they found a way back? Oh my god, this movie's gonna blow. So let's see, what's wrong with this horse's ass of a movie? Well, for starters, the graphics in the game are actually better than the graphics in the opening, that's strike one. Koopa is a human being instead of a dragon, that's strike two. And two Italian plumbers are played by a British man and a Latino. And that's strike three. You know what, what the hell? Five minutes into this movie already, it has three strikes against it. This is going to suck ass. All right, so the film centers around a love story between Luigi and the only good-looking archaeologist in the entire world, Daisy. Their chemistry is about as awkward as Tom Cruise and, well, I guess anyone he's dated. I want to apologize right now in case when, when I start get to get talking and I start to say things that sound really weird. Don't worry, Luigi. It's not you. It's just bad writing. Upon taking her out to dinner, we find out that the Mario brothers aren't even brothers at all. They're father and son. Mario here brought me up. But wait a minute, doesn't Mario specifically at one point say Mario Brothers Plumbing? And isn't the title of the stinking movie? So wait, what are you trying to say? They're... They're father and son and brothers? He's been my, my mother my whole life. You're messed up, movie. You're fucking messed up! So after that incestuous moment, we find that Daisy is abducted and taken to a parallel world where humans evolve from lizards instead of evolving from monkeys. Suck on that creationism! <coughs> and in the horrifying city of... Name not announced, there is an evil tyrannical Saurus Rex known as King Koopa, played by Dennis Hopper. Only he doesn't breathe fire and throw hammers like in the video game. No, this Koopa is more like a mix between Donald Trump and Dr. Evil. See you later, alligator. Disney's reluctant dragon would have been scarier than this. Really? Oh, how nice! His plan is to merge our two dimensions together and de-evolve mankind. He does this by using a rock from a meteorite that hit Earth thousands of years ago that Daisy apparently keeps around her neck or some shit like that. I don't know. I'm usually asleep at this point. Stupid. His evil henchmen in this movie are creatures known as Goombas. And I have to admit, I honestly think they went out of their ways to make sure these creatures look nothing like the original game. It's like they're trying to piss us off. Yeah, I'll bet. Name! Mario. Last name. Whoa, whoa, we're gonna hear Mario's last name? Dude, we've never heard Mario's last name before. This ought to be interesting. Uh, cool, alright, so, uh, what's Mario's last name? Mario. Yeah, now what's your last name? Mario. No, 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 what's your last name? Mario. No, no, okay. What's your first name? Mario. Alright, now what's your last name? Mario. Fuck you. What's your first name? Luigi. And what's your last name? Mario. Shut up! What's your last name? Luigi Mario. Those are both first names. What's your last name? Mario. Shut it! What's your full name? Luigi Mario. Those are both first... Okay. What's your first name? Luigi. And what's your last name? Mario. Shut the fuck! What's your full name? Luigi Mario. What is this? An Abbott and Costello routine? It's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Are you fucking kidding me? They couldn't think of last names, so they just gave them their first names again? That's like something a kid writes down when he doesn't know the answer on a test! Mario's last name is Der Mario, and Luigi's last name is 
Mario 2, because they're brothers, you see. Wait, no, 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 father and son. Now, one of the things you might be asking yourself is why in this version, as opposed to the game, is it Luigi that ultimately gets the hot princess booty? I mean, who does that leave Mario with? Wah! Whoa, boy! Sorry, Mario, but our princess is in another white castle. Unfortunately, the Duchess of Dairy Queen also has the rock and steals it from our heroes, which unfortunately means a lot of these shots. The only way to get it back is for Mario to use his balding Italian charm to seduce her, what some people will do for a roll. Sadly, though, most of the performances in this movie are downright terrible. I mean, I love Bob Hoskins, but half the time it sounds like he's coughing up a hairball. Hey, what is this? Get out of here! And every time I hear that New York accent, I keep expecting Roger Rabbit to pop up. <laughs> but by far, the biggest award for killing a performance goes to the Poopa Scoopa Koopa himself, Dennis Hopper. It's literally like he woke up every morning and just said to himself, I'm not going to act today. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's not going to be acting. In fact, we haven't seen Dennis Hopper in a while, have we? But what do you expect when you're in movies that have you saying lines like... <laughs> Let's hear that again. <laughs> and this is why you don't see Dennis Hopper anymore. In fact, if you watch it in slow motion, you can actually pinpoint the moment where his career implodes in on himself. Watch! <laughs> There is no other line in this movie that could destroy an actor's career so quickly. Monkey! Okay, maybe one other line. In fact, let's see those two back to back. Monkey! 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 The only thing that's kind of cool about this movie is the way they teleport from one world to another. It's not a great effect, but it's pretty inventive when you consider it comes from a city covered in shrooms. <laughs> oh, shut up and say baba. So on top of the bad acting and the lame storyline, there's several lines of dialogue that are just entirely pointless. For example, there's a strange running joke where Koopa tries to order a pizza. I'd like the Koopa special. Pterodactyl tail on that? Yes. Dino, lizard, hold the mammal, no worms, and, uh, spicy. Okay, not funny. Prepare for destiny! Where's my pizza? Okay, still not funny. So your pizza's here! Not now. Looks like I win. And altogether not funny. So the final conclusion we have to draw from this is, not funny, plus not funny, equals not fucking funny! I mean, do these people have to go back to film 101? If you want a joke to work, you need humor! Don't you know that?! Jesus, I can't imagine this film getting any worse. I know this is gonna sound a little strange, but... I want you to meet my father. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, and a pleasure, and I just... I just wanna... Thank you for all your help. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up before I puke. The Mario Brothers get the rock back, stop the evil Koopa, turn him into a Muppet, and return back home. Daisy can't go because she has to figure out where she belongs and they have themselves a happy ending. Or do they? Luigi, Mario! What, what, what's wrong? You're never gonna believe this. I believe it. You do? <laughs> I believe. And I'm not kidding, this is where it ends. On a fucking cliffhanger. What's wrong? How does Mario know what's wrong? Why does Daisy have a flamethrower? Well, thank heavenly Jesus, we'll never find out the answer to those questions. Super Mario Brothers bombed at the box office and thus never had a crappy Hollywood sequel. Word of advice, guys. Concentrate on botching up the first shitty-ass movie before you start thinking up ideas about how to fuck up the next one. Perhaps the biggest surprise of the movie is the fact that somebody actually wrote it. Not one, but three people actually played a part in putting this together. And would you believe that this movie actually had two directors? Because one director can't possibly make a film this bad alone. It takes two, with concerted effort. But to their credit, could you imagine anyone else that could possibly direct a superior film? Monkey! It's got me there. I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to.